Hi folks, and welcome back to the plot. Just like that, the weather has changed on a dime. It, uh, I can't believe just last video I was running around in a t-shirt and shorts. <laughs> it's not like that anymore. And uh, I wasn't really planning on coming up today. I had smugly checked the weather forecast a few days ago and I was chatting to everyone on the Potty Mouth Garden Club and smugly saying, oh, my lowest temperature is around six or seven. So I've got nothing to worry about. You know, Jesse in London was saying they're down to like one or two maybe first frosts are coming. I checked today, <laughs> due three or four degrees, so maybe not quite as good as I was hoping for. Serves me right for being such a smug southerner, doesn't it? <laughs> it is nice though, generally. So I'm right on the south coast near Portsmouth and generally the weather is very mild here. We get quite lucky with those, those kind of spring frosts and we get quite a late winter frost as well. So fingers crossed that is still true, but I thought what I would do is just nip up and get the door on the tunnel because the peppers in here, they need a bit more time, you know? Some of these are looking a little bit wilty and uh, yeah, there's just not many peppers on most of these plants. This is actually one of the seven pot bubble gums and I did one of these in a 7.5 litre pot and one in a 10 litre and this one in a 10 litre, you can see, it's only just starting to set fruit. Now, provided that these plants don't hit zero, provided the soil especially doesn't hit zero, they can still kind of carry on, but they do need sun and they do need warmth to speed up the ripening. So I will try and keep these going for as long as I possibly can. This one, I think the Kashmiri. Yeah, it's looking a little bit wilty. You can see I've just watered and there's, oh, oh my goodness. I wasn't expecting to see that. There's quite a few aphids on here. I hadn't realized, I can see. There is too, I think, a little tiny hoverfly larvae there. Like one just in here. I think that's probably a hoverfly larvae, which is a good sign. A few aphids here and there generally don't bother me too much. You're gonna have some on your plants if they're out and about, but it's when you get explosions of the population that take over, that's when it can really hit your plants. And this late in the season, unlikely to really be having a major impact. But yeah, this one, the birch chili. I've got one, maybe two little red ripe ones on there. A few greens, but lots of this. Flowering and tiny baby chilies. Ah, oh, not ideal, not great timing. So one thing you can do, and a question I had recently, if you're at a similar stage with some of your chili plants where you've got quite a lot of green fruit, but also you're still getting a lot of flowers coming through, is it worth pruning off those flowers, pruning off some of the growth to try and get the energy going into ripening those peppers? Probably, yeah, it probably is. I've never really done it myself. It's a bit kind of micromanagey, you know, some micromanagement of your plants. But if you're desperate to get some ripe fruit and you're a little bit worried about it freezing because if there's fruit on the plant and the fruit itself freezes, it's pretty much unusable. You know, it, it does go really, really gross. So that's the worst case scenario for me is actually losing the fruit that's on there. So if I've got time, I might do a bit of pruning of the flowers on the really kind of slow plants. Generally, I think I would put this, this kind of slow growth and lack of fruiting to down to the pot size. So you can see the smaller pots here, this is Sugar Rush Stripey. I've had a nice crop off here already. That is in a 7.5 litre pot and you can see there's a few ripe peppers on there. But then when you look at the bigger plants like this Kashmiri, the 10 litre pots, I mean, yeah, it's just not as much fruit. So those kind of smaller pots do force earlier, earlier fruiting. And I think probably with a bit of a weird spell that we had in summer, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be a great crop. This is another one, the 7.5, the Sugar Rush Long Peach, looking quite good. I've had a nice harvest off there already. So just one thing to, to kind of bear in mind, I thought I'd got it all bang on this year. It's not necessarily just pot size though, because you've seen the 15 litre auto pots that I've got that are just, you know, they're, they're just crazy, crazy big. So something's gone a little bit wrong here, maybe light and overcrowding. There's always something to work on for next year, isn't there? I was actually really surprised when I walked in. It was so cold outside and it's not been very sunny. The sun's literally just started to come out, but it was dramatically warmer in the tunnel, which is kind of why I want to get the second door on. Like I say, a, oh, that's an amazing wasp. Oh, that's a parasitic wasp that has just landed. Oh, I've got to show you that. Oh, oh can you see that one? There, yes. A lot of the parasitic wasps are often like almost jet black. This is very cool yellow one. So if you see something like this in the garden, 
quite often a wasp that kind of size and shape is going to be laying its eggs and they're going to come out and eat your pests. This is going to be aphid hunting. That is, oh, that is so cool to see. Wow. Love that. Anyway, three or four degrees, these plants should survive. You know, they're very tender. People think of peppers and chilies as really tender and like they don't like the cold. And that is true. At below 10, they'll kind of stall. They won't really be doing their growing, but they will be doing their ripening. And that kind of that coldness is actually quite a good signal for the plants that they need to start ripening, you know, because the, the season is coming to an end and the ripening means ripe seeds, fertile seeds, and that's what they're programmed to do, you know, to continue growing and producing fertile seed. And so four degrees kind of is a little bit scary. It's got me a little bit worried. I'm a bit disappointed with the crop, but in some ways I'm trying to look at it as a positive thing, you know, but that said, I still do want to get the door on just to give them that extra little bit of shelter. And these doors, they've kind of got a mesh at the top. So I'm not sure whether I'm going to leave that in all season. I think Steve started with the mesh and, you know, it's good ventilation for that kind of spring summer period. But I'm not sure if I should leave it like that over winter or not. It's probably good to have some ventilation in here. So any tips on that, let me know but it should be pretty easy to get the door on because the door thing is on. I don't know what you call it. I don't know what the proper name for this, uh, this thing that the door sits in, but not only is that on, I have also been very busy this week digging out a little bit and you can see I've got the, the path I've just started to lay. Now there were some interesting comments about slabs and people not liking them and people wondering why I'd gone for slabs in here. And to be honest, I'm just copying Tony, <laughs> okay? Tony C. Smith has an amazing polytunnel, okay? He plays it down. You know, we have a little joke on YouTube. I know we do, but I do think Tony could do with giving himself a little bit more credit. You know, his polytunnel is very, very successful. And I've always looked at his, I've been watching him for years and see he had slabs in his tunnel and I just automatically went to it. You know, I just automatically wanted to have that. Slabs aren't just a low maintenance, they're basically zero maintenance. You know, I do want to put a membrane under it and I want to get them pretty level because at the moment, oh no, this one's quite level. A few of them. Okay, no, this one's quite level. <laughs> this one, there you go. This one is like surfing, you know. This one's back and forward. Uh, you know, I really have just chucked these down. And unfortunately, I've not got quite enough. They're really big as well. I don't know how big they are, but they're flipping heavy. I've only got two left, so I'm gonna have to seek some more out or do something a little bit more. One of the other, there were so many good suggestions in my last video about the polytunnel plans. One other thing I do wanna do is have a little potting area, some kind of storage, permanent potting area, that kind of thing. I do wanna have the hanging shelves as well. I didn't mention that, the floating shelves for the seedlings, but I keep getting sidetracked. Let's do the door, shall we? Now, in many ways, because this is a second-hand tunnel, Obviously, with Steve's, um, some people actually have been watching the series uh, without knowing this. Um, so maybe just worth mentioning that, yeah, this is a, a recycled tunnel, a second-hand tunnel. Uh, it belonged to Steve Greenside Up, who ran a YouTube channel, and sadly, uh, he passed away before he ever got the chance to grow in it. So the whole idea behind this kind of series that I've been doing with the polytunnel is <laughs> giving it kind of another chance, you know? Um, and it was one of the things he said, he wanted to see how many chilies I could grow in this thing. So it's been in some ways much more difficult than having a, a fresh a fresh tunnel. Uh, I've made a few mistakes, um, kind of sunk it a little bit too low. Lots of lessons learning along the way. You know, I imagine Steve would be having a, a really good chuckle. But on the flip side, because it's secondhand, there are lots of things like the doors, which are, you know, pre-assembled. It's one less job and it's really, really nice, like having something like this that was built by Steve, um, you know, built by his hand, and uh, you know, just being able to basically pick it up and plug it straight in. And these are very simple, <laughs> in theory. Anyway, the issue is you need to have the clearance underneath. I'll put some slabs in the way, so. Let's see if we can just slot it in as intended. Almost sort of, you might be able to tell there's quite a big gap here because it's kicking out. So I need to have just a little dig around, make a bit more room for it. I always think I'm nearly done and there's always a little bit more to do. I was thinking I had to take all this down a little bit more than I already had anyway because 
Now that I've laid the slabs in the tunnel, I've realized that they weren't quite right. I wanted to get a nice little brick layer. As you can see, I've not laid that properly just yet either. I have been surprised at the way the doors hang on this uh, first tunnels. I've come over to this one because it's fully finished. I hadn't quite finished the other one at the top. And uh, yeah, even when it's all kind of finished, this one is, for all intents and purposes, properly done. You've got this gap all the way down the sides of the doors. Now I assume that that is just for a little bit of added ventilation. There's a little bit of kind of back and forth, but you know, you can almost make the meat at the bottom, but there's always gonna be that gap at the top because of the way that the actual bracket works and the way they slot in. So if I've done something wrong, please do let me know in the comments. It just seems a bit weird, but I think it's probably fine. God, I love this site. This makes you smile every time I walk past and you can see the peppers pushing on the plastic of the polytunnel. That's always sort of been a little image that I had in, in the back of my head. That I've been looking forward to seeing while I was doing this tunnel, but next year it's gonna be all the way, all the way along. We're gonna see that and I cannot wait. Tell you what folks, I absolutely love digging. It's one of those things that really, it, it makes me feel very present. I don't always feel that present in the garden, you know, it, it can be one of those things that really absorbs you and grips you. But quite often when I'm gardening, I find myself doing a lot of thinking and there's a lot of really terrible stuff going on at the moment. Uh, and not for me personally, I mean, you know, in the world, things that I struggle to tear myself away from, from looking at and thinking about. It's hard to find the words. The point I'm trying to make is it's nice to have a task like this where you just literally lose yourself for a little while. And I think it's one of the reasons I really like those winter jobs. They're kind of ripping stuff out, getting everything cleared, digging, things like that, because where well, it just occupies that bit of your mind, which can be quite difficult to quiet sometimes. Anyway, it's all getting a bit serious, isn't it? Let's put the door on properly. These are the little stoppers that you get from first tunnels. <laughs> it took me a little while to, uh, it was a bit embarrassing trying to find what to do with this in the instructions, but basically this little metal bit will hook onto the inside. And then as you push this down, well, as you tighten this, it pushes down on the metal and holds this in place. And it just acts like a door stop as it butts up to it. What you do is you get it till it's nearly tight. You slip it in quite far along and then you pull the door across and that will kind of shift it into position and then you can just screw it in where you want the door to stop and that should hopefully be that the one at the other end you don't have to really worry about so much you just get it in so that it stops the door from falling out and <laughs> going flying there we go we got it one slightly weird and frustrating and typical thing is that I ran out of nuts. <laughs> I don't know how. I would have thought that there was a like, sorry, chili pepper. Uh, I would have thought that there was like a hundred spares, but there's not. I'm literally just missing two. I can't really take anything from the frame. You know, it's the same size nuts on the frame. I don't want to touch that. But so what I've got to do is take off some of these from this door frame. Now this can go on the other and we'll have two on each, which is not ideal. I do need to get some more. Nuts. <laughs> I did as well actually lose the washers for these, so it's one of the reasons that there was a delay when I was really enthusiastically getting through all of the tunnel work. I had to wait ages and I kept forgetting to pick some more up. That was one of those things. This silver one was barely hanging onto the door frame, to be honest. So I'm glad I remembered to do this today now that the door isn't, the weight of the door is in there. There we go. I just remember, need to remember to get those other two. Look at that, folks. Door number one and... Ooh. 
Door number two. We have doors on the polytunnel. It's still pretty far from complete. There is loads, loads more to do. I've got a bit of a door kit. I need to figure out exactly how this stuff is going to work. I think this one, I'm shaking them all, I think. The one with the big, this, this one. I think that, is this a door stop? Does this kind of go in the ground and, and act as a second door stop? I don't know, the, oh, the drop spike, obviously. I know how that works, but I'm not too sure about the other one. Maybe I should check the instructions, there's an idea. And of course I need to finish the slabs all the way around the polytunnel and the slabs inside. I need to do some digging in here, but we're making very good progress. And to be honest, today is one of those days where I wasn't going to come to the plot. I was going to sit at home being kind of miserable and doing a lot of doom scrolling and thinking about how terrible everything is. Uh, so massive thank you to all the viewers and the patrons who kind of inspire me. Sometimes give me a little kick up the bum just knowing that someone out there is going to enjoy this video. That is a very nice feeling. So thank you ever so much. An extra special thank you to my Chili Puppeteer patrons, Tony, Bill, Pam, Louise, Mel, Michael, Denise, Socks in the Garden and... Andrew. <laughs> Forgot the last one there, Andrew, so sorry. Thank you ever so much, and hopefully I'll see you again very soon, where we'll make a, another bit of tiny progress somewhere on the allotment. <laughs>